Hi, Calabasas, and welcome to our 15th annual Arts Festival. We're really, really excited this year. We have taken over the Commons, courtesy of them, and I have brought you 140 artists. And actually, I'm sure this is my best show yet. As you can see, behind me is our award winner, Jennifer Main, living only in San Diego and coming out here for our show. And thanks to all the support that the city gives, we're able to grow and grow every year. Come on with me and we'll take a tour of some of the artists. Jennifer is our illustrious artist of the year, and I'm going to show you why. Can you tell me what inspired you to make such a beautiful, happy work? Well, I'm inspired by everyday life, and I just like to observe kind of the journey as we go through and I always have a positive message and I love using bright colors. I just think they do make you feel happy and, and it's a, a great way to yeah, create art. And, um, yeah, love being out here in Calabasas. It's a beautiful city and I'm just honored to be the illustrious artist this year. Oh, thank you. Tell me about what inspired you to do some of this work. Oh, this one looks like a secret. This one, it could go that way, but it's funny because I, I saw the message is going to be about trust. But um, yeah, so that's something I was working on yesterday. We'll see how it evolves. <laughs> so. It's beautiful. And um, I hear you have a gallery. Where is it? I just opened it in downtown LA on Gallery Row where the big art walk's been going on. And um, our grand opening is this Thursday. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, we'll see you. if we can get out there and take a look at it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Hi, we're in the booth of Carlos Page. I love, love, love his metal work. And this guy, look at this cool guy we've got here. Tell us, what inspired you to work with this kind of material? I just love the, uh, these are noble materials that we have built our world with. Um, with steel, concrete, wood. Um, they are very basic, but at the same time, we have been uh, uh, able to do wonderful things with them. And uh, so, my inspiration comes from architecture, from nature, from uh, many different sources. So do you like working with the metal, um, like with the torch and all that, or the, or the wood? I mean, how Yes, actually how I use determine? the torch with both. With both? Yes, I, uh, I char my uh, wood pieces and um, of course I do a lot of um, uh, different things with the torch when applying, uh, applied to steel. And um, so it's one of my, my main tools. I do a lot the with torch? it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm kind of drawn to this piece. What inspired you to do this one? How did this come about? This I, um, I call uh, silver lining. And um, it's just a, kind of a reflection of the times. Uh, it's, uh, there's always something good uh, coming you know, from behind or uh, to the surface. And uh, I love the luminosity. It has a lot of uh, playfulness with uh, uh, light. And, uh, and uh, it's just a combination with the wood that warms things up a bit. And um, it's just, uh, I'm happy with the channel. I'm happy with this one too. I think this would be beautiful, beautiful piece. And I notice you have some benches too. Yes. These could go at anybody's home in your entry, have a little place to sit, throw your purse, your iPad, really indoors, do a good outdoors. Indoors. It's all hand oh, yeah. forged. Mm -hmm. uh, I create these benches uh, individually. I don't have, I don't cast the legs or anything. Everything is um, hand forged. I heat the steel and hammer it into shape. Wow, that's why it's so beautiful. It's so personal. Yes, it is. beautiful booth with the beautiful Erin Hansen. And Erin, I'd like you to tell me about your work. Do you do 
Is, do you only do landscapes? Yes, I, I used to paint all sorts of things, you know, animals, uh, my house, you know, my face. I, I, I used to draw my hand, drawing my hand, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> I used to draw that a lot in self-portraits. But um, yeah, I, I got into rock climbing about five years ago and I've since then just been painting landscapes, mostly desert landscapes, uh, Joshua Tree, Red Rock Canyon, Utah, Arizona. But I got into painting these beautiful kind of green rolling hills. I spent a week up in Paso Robles this, this spring. We have green rolling hills too in Calabasas. I have been noticing yes, that. Yes, we do. It's given me a lot of, I, actually I want to paint that mountain right there with those trees on it. <laughs> I took a photo of it. <laughs> oh, we have so many beautiful mountains, but to yeah. meet a beautiful artist like you, that's very special. Tell me, how did you hear about Arts Council? I am um, from my fellow artists. Actually, oh. yeah, we all kind of know each other. We all go to the same kind of round of festivals, and they told me it was a beautiful festival and, and a beautiful area. Oh, it sure is, and we're so happy to have you. Let's look at her work. This is an example of the perfect green rolling hills. It really did look this, this green in, in May. As you probably know, living in Calabasas, yes. the grass turns apple green, Ooh. and you get the sunlight on it, and you get some wildflowers rolling through. And I'm, I'm addicted to old, broken down fences. <laughs> A lot of my paintings have these fences kind of winding through them, and I, I love that theme. I think it's. Very Ooh, attractive. I think it's beautiful. Welcome back, Joe. Thanks. I'm so happy. This is Joe Woodford, and he's been in our show many, many times. I'm a huge, huge fan of his work, and I'm going to show you why. Take a look over here. I love this piece. I love the coloring. I love the doodad on the top, the finial, they call it. I love the whole thing. Tell me, what inspired you to make this, and how do you do it? Well, the piece is actually thrown in sections, so you'll see that uh, when you do it, there's a section here and a section here, and then the top section. And as the piece dries, when it's spinning on the wheel, you add each section to complete the piece. The, 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 the secret is actually being able to hide the seams so you don't know where the piece starts and ends, and get all the piece to, to contour together right and look uh, pretty symmetrical. And is this um, horse hair? Yes, it is. It is? Oh, yes. You seat. learn a lot. <laughs> you yeah. learn a lot. The green is a new glaze. It's the first year that I've actually formulated and used it in Raku. Uh, it's pretty temperamental, so it's tough to get a lot of pieces out in that glaze to work. But the dry glaze has been a really big hit this year. Oh, it's wonderful. And this piece on the wall, this is a free, free hanging piece? It is a free hanging piece. Uh, it's glass and ceramic incorporated. Uh, being that Raku has a lot of really bright colors, glass works really well with it as kind of a cousin medium to complete forms uh, like this piece here. So this one is like jewelry for your wall. Good word. I like that. Jewelry for the wall. I've heard that one before. It's nice. Thank you. Wow, I just love it. And these, are is, I think, is this your statement piece, one of them? Yeah, this has been a, uh, a new direction for the work, uh, contemporary forms with more of an industrial quality being this egg shape, real soft and gentle, and then add that negative uh, attraction of the squares to it to give it that, that twist of you know, positive and negative. And then you go with the black and white glaze to even complete that further. So. Also, it, um, it looks so approachable. Like I want to go is. right up to it. And be my I guess. think this would be a wonderful piece for somebody's entrance or on the way out to the backyard or you know, in your dining room. Who would want something this beautiful? Oh, it's it gorgeous. Is Welcome to the beautiful booth of Claudia Aris. Let's walk over here and take a look. 
Oh, I love these colors, Claudia. This is so beautiful. How did you decide to make these? They look like armor or pendants or something. Like well, there's either a shield shape or a circular shape, or I've started doing more Asian styles now. Um, I'm just inspired by the head glass that I use. It's the ends of the glass. Um, and each one is different. They cannot be duplicated. And even though I could maybe get this same glass, it will be different every time. It's got lots of character. It's very smooth, organic looking edges. And that's what inspires me. I, I lay a head down on my bench and it sounds strange, but it talks to me. I know the language. <laughs> Welcome to the little mini studio of Steve Snyder, one of the premier artists here at our show this year. I'd like to show you some of these sculptures, and I'd like him to talk about first this one, the girl. This, is the this sculpture is called New Shoes. It uh, always receives a lot of attention. It's a limited edition bronze of 14, and this is number four. It is uh, also in addition to being the crowd's favorite, normally, it's my wife's personal favorite. And uh, it's kind of a, a take on how people normally, as we get some new material possession, we uh, get a temporary emotional boost out of it. For me, it might be a new tool or, or a watch, but nothing said it easier than a woman with a new pair of shoes. This sculpture is called Threshold. It is a one-of-a-kind, hand-fabricated steel sculpture made from hundreds of steel rods that are individually welded together and then ground out to, to uh, finish the form. And it's just kind of a take on uh, lines that we cross in our life, uh, doorways. Uh, sometimes we have that moment where we consider whether we should actually cross it or go through it, and this is just kind of a take on that uh, human experience. Hi, a great big Calabasas hello to Danny. This is the most beautiful, thank you. beautiful work. Thank you, thank you. What inspired you to make such gorgeous, large work? Well, many years ago I worked with another artist and she used similar processes and stuff and so I kind of learned from her, but the, um, the initial idea was surfboards. I tried to make surfboards. I wanted to make custom surfboards that had whatever, you know, types of imagery on it and then the um, um, that kind of turned into painting somewhere along the line. Oh, they are so beautiful. Is, Thank you. Tell me, is this an oak tree? That is that actually, this one right here is a cypress. Oh, a cypress. Yeah, I have an oak right next to it, but I, California cypress and the, some palm trees. Um, as I mentioned earlier, most of the paintings are made with um, aged papers that I let sit outside for like sometimes seven years, eight years, just in the sunshine, and so, it ages it. Is it newspapers or, or, or art paper? It's just paper that you would pack dishes with. And oh also goodness. I use books, different types of book pages from different teachings from all around the world, different schools of thought on life. So, so you get history, beautiful contemporary art and history at the same time? Exactly, oh, all of it. Wow, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. You're such a cool guy, thank I love you, your you. work. Let's look more at it. Yeah. Now the patina, beautiful. that color green is made by um, painting liquid copper and then letting it sit outside for a couple months and it turns this, this type of patina color. Then I'll seal it with a sealant before I paint the trees on. This bottom strip on the bottom is called banana leaf and it's the side of a palm tree that comes off and then I'll pull it off and cut it and make it look real nice. And then I'll splash surfboard resin as a final, kind of like a final component to the painting. And when it's all done, I lay it flat and put heat on it and the heat helps it to kind of set up so it looks like it's wet. I'd like to introduce you to Jeff Lang, one of my most favorite artists. He does big, gorgeous, monumental pieces. Actually, we're looking at this one for City Hall. Tell me, what inspires you to make these huge, huge pieces? And what materials are you using? I'm using stainless steel, and I'm inspired by nature, memories of my past, and, yeah. and all, just everything inspires me when I'm making my work. Tell me about your workshop. Uh, it's a small little shop. I have a, a little plasma cut that I've hand cut every piece and I have a TIG welder that I put them together and then the finish you're seeing on them is a sanded finish. So you take the little the sanding machine? Well, in? it's basically it's a mini grinder with a 80 grit disc in it and a, every line of light that you see in the piece is a pass with the sander. Wow. Let's look at this piece behind us. 
Doesn't this look like the city symbol? That's what I think. So tell me, Jeff, what, this is a bird from nature, obviously. It is. It's a red-tailed hawk. And I was watching one soaring, and I was noticing how their wings were curving up in front of their the beak. And so I tried to get that horizontal kind of feel into a vertical piece and keep it very, very elegant line, very simple line. And that's how I came up with this design. This is just great. Have, have you ever done any other art in public places? Yes, I have. I have uh, three pieces over in Cathedral City, California. Uh, there's pieces in Wisconsin, uh, Oklahoma, Colorado, so all over, all wow. over the United States. So they found you too? They did. This is Jeff Lang, fantastic artist. I'd like to introduce you to a very special artist, Dennis Minamora. He's been coming to our show now for a few times, but we adore having him here. He's got a cool personality and the best, best work. And I've been wanting to ask you for all this time. To me, they look like photographs, but I know that you paint. You know, the average person goes by me probably three years in a row before they realize these are not photographs. So sooner or later, I get you. So she asked me how I do it. This is very simple stuff. I take a reference photograph. I make a solution of silver nitrate and water. I soak a piece of watercolor paper in this solution. I let it dry. I sit down with a dry piece of paper, reference photograph. I start to draw. I grid for accuracy. I do a very, very detailed pencil drawing. Now I get out my watercolor. Everybody wants to know, why do you soak your paper in silver nitrate? Well, it's silver different. nitrate prevents watercolors from spreading. It gives me edge control. So I can paint in the layers. My watercolors go down like a thinned out acrylic, but since they're watercolors, I can use lots of liquid masking to get a sharp point, a chiseled edge. When that watercolor is completely dry, that's about a third of what I do. Now comes a dry chalk pastel over the dry watercolor. When that's finished, pastel pencil, pen and ink for the detail. Do that for about 350 hours, and you go from this to that. Voila. And that's all there is to it. Of course, uh, this is not the original. The originals of my work will always be in this frame. Anywhere in the world you see this frame, it's made especially for my originals. So I always have something for every pocketbook. The originals, the smaller enhanced pieces, or the real small ones. It's always framed. Always beautiful. Thank you. Always happy. Always travel pictures. Do you travel everywhere? I spent about 18 years uh, as a photojournalist in, in, based out of Italy. So I covered North Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe. I'd always go back to Venice to get hammered. The checks came to Monterosso. <laughs> so it's a good place to be, hanging out. Hanging out, having yeah. the checks come in. That's right. Perfect. So, you know, I had a lot of uh, my reference work came from Europe and things like that. But I gauge it to where I'm going. If I go to the Southwest, I'm American Indian. I have all my relatives' paintings and portraits that I take there and places like that. Oh, Dennis, no wonder you're so special. It's a very hard process that you do. You make it look easy. One, two, three, you're showing your stuff, but it's you very make this hard look work. Easy. <laughs> it's very easy for me when I talk to somebody like you. Welcome to the camera ready, Jason Pavilonis. Hi there. He's a wonderful, wonderful photographer who has gone all over the world, it looks like. Mm, I get around. You do get around, and do you do your own framing too? I do a lot of my own framing. I am not able to do all my framing when I'm at all my shows though. Oh, yes. enough. So enough about the frame. Let's get on to about the beautiful, beautiful photography. Tell me, this, look, this work looks like it's been painted. Uh, there's a clear texture, Lorene, over top of the photograph. That encases and preserves the photograph, but all the color you see is in a photographic print underneath. So there is a very painterly quality to the photograph. Oh my goodness, it transcends sure is, it. It, does it transcends transcend. the normal photography, your traditional photography. Yeah, I love it. How about this one over here? This, it's, it's so bright and so alive and belongs over somebody's couch immediately, don't you think? It's got a lot of life. It's not for the faint-hearted. No. Um, it's a private garden. I don't tell where it's at, but it's a Japanese lace leaf maple. It's about 100 years old, and that is pretty much its true color, believe it or not. It's all about lighting, and it was not on a day like today, not a real sunny day like we have here in Calabasas. 
It was a very rainy day. It's totally saturated in water. Um, the sun was coming through the clouds a little bit, so very filtered, even light. And that's why you don't have any shadows, but it's lit. Whoa. Perfect lighting. Perfect lighting, perfect moment for you. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's part of being a photographer. It's all about perfect lighting. Perfect lighting, perfect moment, perfect position for you. So you travel all over. Do you have any special camera or anything? I use a Pentax 645D and a Pentax uh, K5. Oh, those sound wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like they really do the work, but yeah. I, I doubt it. I, yeah. My guess is it's your eye. Ordinary place is an extraordinary light. Oh, that's so wonderful, Jason. Let's look over here. Oh, here's a nice little simple shot. Uh -huh. Did you set that up or was I just sitting I did set there? it up, ah. yes. That's Aruba, uh, Palm Beach, the uh, high rise area. And uh, yeah, it's just a box of crayons, you know. Uh, I was inspired by another photographer, Sip Buniker. Uh, he told me about the shot and I went down to Aruba just for that and set it up and voila. Fortunately for me, they had a fire at that little bistro that day and there was nobody allowed on their beach, so that's why there's nobody in the picture. Oh, it's called 10 Ways to Paradise. Beautiful title, my goodness. I love these ones that have water. The, I can practically feel the water pouring down. Well, that's part of it. That's part of doing it in the sizes I do it. You know, you want to be in the, you want to feel like you're in the photography itself. You know, you want to be there, standing there, enjoying it. Okay, Calabasas, thank you so much. This has been the most wonderful, wonderful year. I'd like to thank CTV, City Council, the beautiful staff that helps me all year long, Amy and Jeff, Tony. They're my team, they're my support. They're the guys I love and I want to continue doing this. Um, I want to thank the Commons. I want to thank you all. Please come and join us every single year and check our website to see what's going on all year long. I not only do art festivals, but I do restaurants and other exciting events that are happening in our city. But mostly I'm known as the art girl. So thanks again, and I hope to see you next year for a wonderful, wonderful art show. Looking forward to it.